Hi, everyone. I'm Trisha Paul, a pediatric oncologist and palliative care physician writer. In this talk about narrative medicine, I'll do three things. Share my life story, define narrative medicine, and provide three take-home storytelling prompts, all in 20 slides, 20 seconds per slide. My story begins with this seahorse. A patient's four-year-old sibling painted it one day when I was volunteering in a children's hospital. He looked up at me suddenly and said the seahorse was for me. This child's generosity reminds me of how altruism is at the heart of what we do in medicine and why we share stories. As a volunteer, I began to wonder, how did adolescents my age cope with cancer? I studied illness narratives and found that hardly any stories about childhood cancer are told by children themselves. I gathered patient stories, studied them for my English thesis, and published a collection of these works to help other children and families. As a medical student, I quickly realized that just as patient voices often go unheard, the stories of those caring for them far too often go untold. In the essay compendium entitled Iatrogenesis, medical students like me shared stories about our experiences becoming physicians. When I became a pediatric resident, I also became a storyteller. With my legs trembling beneath me, I stood before hundreds of people to recite stories I had written. It was terrifying to stretch myself in this way, and equally exhilarating. I've come to define narrative medicine as a practice of attending to the stories of patients, families, caregivers, and clinicians. We share our lived experiences with one another through stories told in writing, conversation, and art. We learn about each other and about ourselves through narrative, which studies have shown to be healing. How does storytelling work? The answer is twofold. Creating narrative prompts reflection, and introspection can enable greater insight into the self. Thinking about how to write about something creates mental distance that can enable us to shape and reframe our own perspectives as well as those of others. This creative process of disinhibition is accompanied by reorganizing with new language. Writing deconstructs and reconfigures, allowing one to infuse experiences with new meaning. So why do stories matter? Three main reasons come to mind. The sinister reality of modern medicine includes our high rates of healthcare provider burden. Narrative medicine practices have been found to lessen compassion fatigue, soften burnout, and reduce stress. Meaning making through writing can help restore joy to the practice of medicine. Beyond self-expression, sharing creates a sense of community that allows us to recognize universal threads in our individual experiences. Sharing stories that resonate counters singular feelings of loneliness and isolation that arise in emotional and high-stakes clinical care. Stories are change agents. We compel one another by sharing our private thoughts, intimate feelings, and secrets of our inner selves. Think about the wide variety of stories you have heard, read, and watched about medicine and how they may have shaped your intrigue about this profession. Remember your own story of what brought you into medicine or made you curious enough to watch this talk. Sometimes it just takes a moment, a deep breath, a pause in a parking lot at dusk, an intentionality, carving out time and space for reflection, organization, and discovery in our fast-paced lives isn't easy, but it can be surprisingly rewarding. What do you see when you look at this picture? Are your eyes drawn to the vast blue skies, the scattered white clouds? Do you look towards the barren trees and the evergreen or the speckled gravel? What about the pine cone front and center, or the person hidden towards the left? Noticing and describing details brings emotions, people, and scenery to life. Challenge yourself to describe the five senses in your narrative. How does the sobering breeze feel? What does the frigid air taste like? Can you smell the salt in the wind? Do you hear the sound of waves crashing against glaciers and find yourself squinting from the brightness of Arctic ice? Let's talk about three exercises that can prompt you to create a narrative of your own. We all compose differently, writing by pen or pencil, typing on a keyboard or a cell phone, so play around with what medium you may be most comfortable with and be open to how different stories emerge in different platforms. 
Snail mail or modern adaptations, such as email, text, or chat, are often a familiar place to start. We all have writerly voices, ways in which we express ourselves through written communication. Writing letters, drafting unsent emails or social media posts, jotting down notes on your phone can be more comfortable and less intimidating starting points. The Japanese haiku poem presents a fun syllable challenge. As illustrated here, haikus are composed of three lines of poetry, five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second, five syllables again in the last line. An example might be, Writer's block struggles, so I puzzle with haikus for Poetry Month. These 55 Scrabble tiles make the 55-word story format even more tangible. What stories might you be able to tell with just a handful of words? So back to the seahorse. He stands tall on my desk, glitter paint still shiny a decade later, shimmering as he catches the sunlight. He reminds me of what altruism looks like in its most authentic form, unedited. He reminds me of how rewarding the altruism of sharing stories can be, both for storytellers and for listeners. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening to my story. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you what I love about narrative medicine. Please feel free to reach out and share your stories with me. I am always eager to listen.